Hello everyone and welcome back to Video Editing 1 with Professor Harris. Today we're going through Lesson 11, Exporting Your Video. Congratulations, you have supposedly finished your Rock Climber video. You've exported, or sorry, you finished editing your uh, promo or your montage, whatever it is you may have created along the way. Um, so that means you're ready to output your sequence. Outside of broadcast and feature film productions, you'll likely export your file from Media Composer and upload it to um, digital platforms like YouTube, Vimeo, or a company's website, wherever your client is looking to see the final deliverable. So in this lesson, we'll learn how to prepare your uh, prepare and export your video to YouTube specifically. Let's look at some of the goals for this lesson. First, we have uh, prepare the timeline for export, configure export settings for YouTube, export a video, and then save an export template so that you can save time next time you go to export to YouTube. All right, let's get into it. Exporting a video sequence. So Media Composer's export options support a diverse output scenarios and delivery requirements. For example, these may be film, broadcast, digital upload, and more. As mentioned, this lesson covers output for YouTube specifically. As you work through this lesson, you'll find the export process is straightforward. That said, many creatives find sorting through all the options challenging and confusing. Um, I know if you've ever tried to export anything from any program, it can be challenging and, and confusing. Thankfully, you can find common digital delivery specifications online, so we can optimize our videos for where they're supposed to go. So, for instance, YouTube, you can literally just Google what is the optimal settings and export settings for my video if it's going on YouTube. Um, and the Avid Media Composer book, which we're going to walk through in this lesson, um, is going to help us optimize our export for YouTube specifically. Um, and we can just use those as a guide when setting up, again, our export. So if you're working as a post -production, uh, at a post-production facility, be sure to ask the for the delivery requirements. And if you plan to upload videos to your website, consider asking the webmaster for spec recommendations um, before you export your video. Uh, because exporting videos, depending on their length, can take a very long time and you do not want to waste time. Time is money, especially in video editing. We should always be improving and working with our interface to increase our speed. All right, so preparing a sequence for export. Before you export the entire sequence, you'll prepare it for output. Let's get into that. Preparing your sequence for export. So before you export the entire sequence, you'll prepare it for output. To do this, we'll load the finished sequence in the timeline. So we have our sequence already loaded in the timeline. We're going to clear any in and out marks. So if I have an in and out mark, like here and there, it might consider exporting only what's set with those in and out marks. To clear your in and out marks, you can simply hit G on your keyboard while selected in the timeline window. We're going to ensure all track enable slash disable buttons are turned on in blue. These are these buttons here. We can also make sure that our track selectors are turned on. This is just an extra thing, um, just in case. Okay, I'm also going to unmute this. So let's say you had something soloed, you would want to undo that, make sure that everything's essentially just ready to go, that you know your timeline's not gonna be affected by any external factors. All right, once you've prepared your sequence, you're ready to export for YouTube upload. Like many Media Composer functions, you get to choose how you'll access the export dialog box. To do this, we can either right-click the record monitor and choose export, with these things, I'm always blind. We can choose export here. We could also go to file, then output, and we could do export to file. And after we do that, we're gonna get the export as dialog box. We can set where we're going to send it to. I've got mine set to the desktop. You, um, depending on who and where you're working, they might want it to export it somewhere else. I apologize if you hear baby noises in the background. I've got a baby nearby. Anyway. Um, we're also going to go down here into the options under export settings, and that's going to open up this menu here. Okay, after we go through the export as dialog box and then open this window, um, we're going to make selections that will optimize our video for smooth playback on YouTube. I love how Avid Media Composer does this. I've talked about this before in my classes where it's like, Avid will be like, so you'll just open Avid Media Composer and arrange the clips and titles and effects in the order that you want them to appear and then export. It's as simple as that. Thanks, Avid. Anyway, so Avid says 
doesn't that all sound super simple, right? You know, setting all the options for optimal export. Um, but what options work best? So let's get into that. So first, if you're preparing a video for YouTube upload, you'll want to review YouTube specifications online. Again, you can zoom, you can uh, Google that. Um, according to the book, uh, the updated uh, preferred file type was MP4 and a few other settings. Um, it wants an AVID codec of AAC-LC, a video codec of H.264, a frame rate of bitrate thereof, resolution, aspect ratio, and all those things. You don't need to worry about all those settings because I'm about to go through them right now with you. So first we're going to make sure that we set our export video type to MP4. That's that's step number one. Um, calls up the Universal Media Engine, so the UME settings and Reliable Export Settings dialog box um, to UME File Export. So that's what this this setting, this window is essentially. So to export the entire sequence and all tracks, we'll ensure to use marks and use selected tracks are unchecked. So use marks and use selected tracks. Um, so we could unselect this and then it would indefinitely use all the tracks. So I wouldn't have to worry about whether or not I had only clicked a few. Um, in this instance, I have clicked every single one, so I could leave this selected, but it would be better to just not select it because you know it's going to um, use everything else. You can also use, make sure to include inactive audio tracks is checked. Um, this would be a good thing to select as well. Again, um, this is just kind of like, you should be refining your sequence to the way that you want it to export in its entirety, whether or not all, or uh, sorry, making sure that all tracks would be selected on your export is uh, a good a good practice. So I will leave the project raster uh, selected in the source raster selection. Um, so during this course, we worked with 720p and 1080p project formats and footage, which align with YouTube's 16 by nine aspect ratio. Uh, by the way, mask margin options let you prepare other aspect ratios for output. So if you wanted to mess with those, you could. Awesome. And that would be here. Okay, in the image section, we can select the destination settings from the preset menu. So Media Composer shows the project raster in the source raster field shown above, right? So we've got our raster dimension of 1920 by 1080. Um, and it adds the project format details uh, to the timeline's name display in the lower left corner. corner. Again, uh, in the lower left corner. I don't see that. Oh, duh, down here in the lower left corner. Um, what else? For this course, uh, we can match the project format of HD 2080, sorry, 1280 by 720 in this case and the 1.000 colon 1 pixel aspect ratio field further confirms the format match. So we know that this is all proper uh, as far as these settings go. Cool. And then the frame rate section, which is right here, frame rate. I'll scroll down because there's a bunch of settings here. We can select the project format rate. If your project uses a progressive format, for example, 720p, uh, 23.976 or 1080p slash 60 project formats. So we can make sure that that is all set up. So we do have our 23.976p. So we are using a progressive format. Okay. We can also, in the color space selection, so that would be here, um, we can select REC.709. We are selected on REC7909. Each one of these has drop downs, by the way. Um, we're just leaving them as they are um, as we go through this. It's essentially already set up, I guess, for the YouTube export. Cool. And then uh, we can enable the keep as legal range button. So why keep as legal range? The answer to that, um, and we'll go ahead and set this to keep as legal range. The answer to that is during upload to YouTube, sorry, during upload, YouTube interprets and unifies color space to BT.709 if necessary. And because Google says so, according to the documentation, YouTube converts full color range to limited color range. So we can keep it at legal range uh, for your reference here. And then in the compression section, we can, uh, down here in so select compression section, um, we can select H.264 for the 
from the Kodak family menu. So um, we can scroll down here to H.264. H.264 is a, a widely used um, format. We can also change the compression here to H.264 HQ for high quality. And we can leave the color depth uh, at 8 bits. So uh, in the audio section, we scroll down here to the audio section, um, we can select AAC from the format menu. So we'll select AAC. And we can choose stereo from the mix menu and set that to 4800. So stereo is set and it's already set to 48, sorry, 48,000 hertz from the sample rate menu. And then we can also select 384 kilobytes per second from the bit rate menu. Uh, down here in bit rate, we can set this to 384. Awesome. YouTube supports stereo or stereo plus um, at 5.1 channel configuration and 48 or four, uh, 96 kilohertz sample rates. So selecting the 384 kilobytes per second aligns with Google's recommended audio bit rate for stereo. Um, so we're doing, we are doing well here on our exports. As you can see, once you know your sequence's destination and delivery requirements, choosing the settings becomes simple. So we've got that all finished. To do this, we're going to click the Save button uh, to, the, to exit the UME file export dialog box. So we'll hit Save. If necessary, we can rename the file in the Save As. So we're already set up. I'm going to leave it Rock Climber Montage V4. And then we can choose the drive folder or create a new folder. So I'm going to leave it on our desktop as our export location, our export folder. And then we can click the Save button uh, to begin the export. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. We're going to let that start its export process. We have an estimated time, and it's whizzing by 15. It's, it's funny, it's jumping higher and lower back and forth. Um, but it is also counting how long it's taking, just in general. 11 seconds was the total time. If I pulled up, <laughs> again, sorry about the baby. Um, if I pull up the, the home screen, and I'm going to do that now, um, we can see that Montage has exported. It's right here. and We can play it. All right. Apparently, I can't play videos when I... Oh, actually, if I play in uh, VLC Media Player, then I can go ahead and I should be able to watch it. This goes back to my computer's not smart enough to record and playback video at the same time. So it looks like it might not be working. Yeah, I don't think it is. That's okay, though. We will, um, we will watch it another time. Or I'll upload it to YouTube. I'll include it as a link in the description of this video, or I can include it as a link at the end of the playlist. Okay, while Media Composer is exporting, um, you will not be able to use the application. That's like a no-brainer thing. Um, so just a quick note there. But we've now exported our video, right? We, we, we finished that process. Once your sequence finishes exporting, you can play the video to ensure the content is correct and it plays back smoothly. So. Assuming we had finished our video export, um, we would want to make sure that nothing else is in there. Um, for instance, with this, when I had that audio track muted, it was because it had all this extra audio that I didn't actually need. Um, therefore, I would probably come back in here and delete <laughs> everything on this track um, and then re-export because I, I don't need the ambiance and the wind blowing as he's trying to walk to the rock and climb. Um, these shots have a bunch of jingling in them because of the equipment on his belt. But um, yeah, so make sure you obviously review your video before you send it to a client or upload it to YouTube. You are wasting your time if it's not perfect. All right, let's move uh, now into creating a template. So if you didn't want to go back in um, every single time and adjust your settings uh, in the export dialog box, um, we can create templates so that uh, and create them and name them so that you can always have a reference for exactly what kind of codecs and things need to be set for YouTube. All right, let's get into that now. To create our export template, we're going to want to navigate back to the export as dialog box. So we can do that by either, again, going file, output, export to file, or we can right click in the record monitor and do export. And that's going to pull that back up. Now we're going to click the options under the export settings area. And then here in the uh, options of the export settings, 
I can see if I scroll down, yeah, my settings that I set earlier are all still intact. So this is still a proper export format for a, um, a 720 HD 720 export. So we can click here in the bottom left corner and hit the Save As button. And we're going to give this export template a meaningful name. So something meaningful in this situation would be 720 YouTube. And now we know this is a 720 YouTube or export template. We'll go ahead and click OK. Awesome. Next, what we're going to do is we're going uh, Media Composer saves our settings to the export settings menu. So next time we need um, this setting for export, we can choose it from that menu. So we can see here in our export settings, we have a few. We have Untitled. We have this one. But this is our, this is our new export settings. So we have a default one. And this list will get longer as you make more. So we can use that now to hit Save. And that will then export. With that, you've got what you need to set up a YouTube export setting and create a template. For quick reference, uh, you can, again, look up the export settings and guidelines um, for like Vimeo and Google, again, online. All right, with that, you are ready to go out and export and save your own projects. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.